this is Gina Lazenby, welcome to my video blog and today I'm in the home of Dr. Maura McGill. Hi. Thank you very much for letting me into your home. You're very welcome. Maura lives on the Gold Coast where I'm visiting at the moment and we initially met on a cruise didn't we last we year? We did, we did. A very cold cruise oh going God. out of New York in December. <laughs> <laughs> and I had summer clothes with me. Yes, I remember. <laughs> So Maura, uh, I'm really interested in your work. What Maura does is uh, she's a medical doctor and she specialises in the area of women's health and the menopause. Yes. So that's what I've come to talk to you about today. Right. Um, I'm feeling a bit warm myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have the fan on because it makes a noise. <laughs> so tell me, um, now women, as a normal part of their lives, will have a menopause. It's yes. A normal, it's a normal... It's the normal thing for women to stop menstruating in their 50-ish kind of age yeah. group. But it seems to be a problem. It's and a it problem just, in Western yeah. society. Right. It's, it seems to be a problem for women. And, you know, when you look back at years gone by at women's health, this code for depression and anxiety when women had the vapors and things, but I, I can't seem to find anything, anybody talking about the menopause. No. So why is it suddenly such a big problem? What, what's made it the, the big problem it is? Well, if you go back from the turn of this century into the 21st and go back into the turn of the 19th to the 20th, women at that stage were not having huge menopausal symptoms. I mean, they might get a little bit of transitional uh, symptoms, but everybody knew what was going on and they did not uh, either complain very loudly or they didn't suffer very loudly. And that's why I think it is a new phenomenon. I think this whole menopause trouble is a new phenomenon. Now all of a sudden, for the last 50 years, women have hot flushes, low libido, dry vagina, sleepless nights, it, the whole syndrome, the seven dwarfs of menopause. You know about seven dwarfs of menopause? <laughs> itchy, bitchy, <laughs> sleepy. Disney ones. Well, like, <laughs> itchy, yeah. bitchy, sleepy, scratchy, bloated, forgetful, and psycho. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, women are getting the whole seven dwarfs of menopause. And so why? In oh. my quiet moments, I have been given a chance to reflect on this. And it is because we know now from research, there are more pesticides, mm. there are more plastics, yeah. There are more um, uh, phytoestrogens from the plant kingdom, but the pesticides and the plastics are the single greatest cause mm. of trouble because these are xenoestrogens, they're foreign estrogens that keep alive the receptor sites. So the receptor sites have been bombarded with all this fake estrogen. The good estrogen can't get in, and now all of a sudden when she has her menopause, uh, the inadequacy of those foreign estrogens is shown and the receptor sites are demanding natural hormones, and they're demanding is what causes the symptoms. Right. Yeah. And it's a modern phenomenon, but if we could only get women to have organic food, stop microwaving in plastic, stop storing your food in plastic, don't cover it with plastic, don't spray fly spray. That's more of a problem in Australia, I guess, than it is in the UK. But we have the occasional fly in England. The occasional fly in England. But we have a lot of flies here. As they used to say about the Northern Territory, 15 million blowflies can't be wrong. It's a great place. <laughs> but if you get rid of the pesticides and the fly sprays, life will calm down a lot. But the basic reason I got involved in this because I found that using natural hormones that are identical to what's in your body as you're a young woman actually helps these symptoms enormously. Oh. They're tailored perfectly to your particular needs, which are not the same as my needs and not the same as her needs or her needs. Right. Tailored exactly to yours. And now all of a sudden women say, oh, I feel so much better. Wow. Oh, I feel, I feel normal again. And that's a great, you know, it's a great place for a doctor to work. It's such a really rewarding area to work in. Wow. Yeah. And so, is that your specialisation? I, I do mostly hormones yeah. now. I mean, obviously, somebody falls down with a heart attack in front of me, I can deal with that <laughs> too. Happen. But by choice, I deal with women's hormones because there are so few people actually specialising in it. Well, helpful. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can't. I mean, uh, back in the UK, I'm thinking that uh, it's really difficult to get a hold of things like progesterone cream, and I've, I've had that cream in the past, and I've had to have it sent to me from somewhere. I think we want to keep off buying things off the internet where we yes. don't really know the supply because this is, you yes. know, it's like an, an unknown area, but there's information there. So 
Practically speaking, what can a woman do if she's watching this now okay. and thinks, oh, <laughs> I'm hot, what can I do? Well, well the right. very first thing that a woman needs to do yeah. is go to the website, which you will have yeah. with this video, download the McGill Menopause Management Report, okay. because in that you've got seven hormones that must be measured. Yeah. And without that information, she's prescribing for so herself in the blood. Well, no, no, no. There's okay. seven, and they have to be in balance with each other. And it's all about the balance, not about okay. the actual number. Okay. And when she's got those tests done, then she'll know what she needs. Okay. The next step is to go and find a compounding pharmacist who will make up That's the a, prescription. So I, I've never heard of a compounding pharmacist. These, the, the, we've got lots of them in Australia oh, yeah. and lots in America, but I'm, I think uh, the UK hasn't got all that many. But it's not that they haven't got any. So you go onto the internet, yeah. compounding pharmacists in the UK, yeah. hit Mr. Google, he knows everything, yeah. and see what he pops up. Yeah. Because if you start at the doctor, yeah. you'll go to 10 doctors before you find anyone who knows what you're talking they about. They won't know. No. I mean, you have uh, to start uh, yeah. at the pharmacist. Uh, and in the UK, our GPs are general practitioners. Yes. And it really is hard to get support for yeah. that specialisation of women's health. Because yeah. there's so little is known. And even if they specialise in women's health, they often don't know about natural hormones. No. I mean, right. most of the gynaecologists in the world whom you would expect to know all about it, actually know nothing about it. Because okay. gynaecology is a surgical profession. Okay. They are trained to cut out oh. cysts and emergency babies. and yeah. blah, 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 blah. So it's a surgical profession. They're not quite as interested in the natural chemistry. So that's why I say start at the pharmacist. He will tell you who is a reliable doctor in your area. Mm -hmm. If you fail to do that, mm -hmm. you will need to have a long, hard look at your seven hormones and see what you need, because the, the, usually the one that you need is estrogen and progesterone, but the others sometimes. And then you need to inquire from doctors maybe overseas. In Australia, it's all a prescription. Okay. You can't get, you can get 1% or 1.5% without a prescription on the internet. Well, 1.5% of progesterone is not going to do anybody any good. <laughs> you know, you've got to do 20 milligrams, 30, 40, 50, yeah. 60 milligrams, which is 6% or 8%. Um, you have to use these higher doses in women who are really low in that mm. thing. So a prescription is needed. But the compounding pharmacist that you deal with, either overseas or in your area, is your best friend. Okay. Because he knows the doctors who are stupid, and he knows the doctors who are good, and behind closed doors, he'll tell you, right? <laughs> You're the doctor calling the doctor stupid. He won't tell, he won't send you to someone who doesn't know what you're talking about in natural okay. hormones. And there's no point spending money, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before you find no. one who knows what you're talking about. I don't want to waste money now. You don't want to waste money. So you get your hormones back in balance, and life starts to feel good again. Mm. And the girls come to my surgery and say, oh, I just need some more of that cream. It's absolutely <laughs> marvellous. I say, yeah, 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 okay. But every three months, we have to measure it again because menopause is a transition. Okay. It happens over the course of two, three, four, five years and you change. Mm. So you need to follow the change by an adjustment of your dosages. So you need to get those tests done every three to six months. So uh, just practically speaking, wherever you know, somebody mm -hmm. might be watching this in the world, a starting point then is your is your form. Menopause which management report. Yeah. Yes. And then from there, um, with the aid of your office, um, if they're here or yes. they start looking for a compounding pharmacist yes. to find a doctor and to find a doctor to prescribe them the missing hormones. The missing hormones, exactly. exactly. And then they'll start to feel normal again. That's great. Yeah. So what I what I want to ask you about now is. The tra you know, use the word transition, you know, a woman's health is transitioning and it is a transition point in life. Mm -hmm. And surely we can't have been um, given this curse without some <laughs> blessing. <laughs> That's true. So That's true. Talk about the, the blessing of this transition period. You, you, you know, yes. itemize two to one.